Hi, I'm Jacob and I will be your teacher during this lesson. In this lesson, I will show you how this CPU processes data, executing your code. We will talk about variables in PLC's memory. Let's start. Let's start with analysis of signals in our control system. In our virtual environment, you can find some hardware elements like push buttons, switches, sensors, and coils. These hardware elements have related signals in our PLC system. Push buttons, switches, and sensors provide input signals for your control system. Whereas PLC provides output signals for energizing coils for pneumatic valves. Okay, now let's go to project tree. Go to PLC2, click twice on device configuration. And here you can see the view of your PLC unit. Enlarge the view. Here you can see front view of your PLC with the LEDs that indicate state of your input and output signals. To write PLC program controlling your system, you have to define those signals assigning them to proper channels in this module. To operate on your signals and to assign physical signal to a proper channel in your PLC module, you need a variable. As you can see, I have already declared some variables here. These are input variables. And here you can see output variable for coil Y2. Variables are basic elements in PLC programming. Variable stores data, has name, has defined type, possesses address in CPU memory, and what is the vital thing? Variable changes its value while program execution. Constant is similar to variable. The main difference is that constant does not change value while program execution. You define one value for this element. Here you can see tag table with some variables defined. I have defined variable for conveyor. This is the output variable. And I have defined two variables for push buttons. All those variables are declared as Boolean data type. It means that they can have zero or one value, true or false. Here you can see the address of those variables. X conveyor one is declared as output variable by address 0.0. .0. X push button one is defined as input variable on address 0.0. .0. Zero. And the next push button is declared on the following address, 0 0.1. Here you can find a constant defined in user constant table. As I said, constant does not change value while program execution. So here in the table, you have to define the value and this value is not changed during PLC operation. 
As you can see, constant is declared in different style. For declaring constants, we use capital letters. Okay, now let's go back to our simulation environment and let's analyze signals and variables in our system. Okay, now go to project tree, click PLC tags and select my tag table. Here you can find variables declared in our control system. Okay, let's sort our variables by the address. Now you can see input signals and then the output signals. Okay, let's test our signals in simulation environment. To do this, let's go in online mode with our PLC simulator. You have to select your PLC in the project tree, then click go online. Select your tag table and click monitor all. A new column appeared. Here you can see monitored value of those variables. And let's start. Here you can find start button, stop button. Start button is right here. If I click this button, you can see this signal state in monitor value column. You can also see the state of this signal right next to this button. Then you can find stop button. Stop button has normally closed signal. It means that it provides high state true if this button is not activated, if it is not pressed. If I click this button, if I press this button, the signal goes to low state, it goes to false. And then you can find selector switches. Be stable push button. and e-stop button, emergency stop button. If I press this button, it provides false to this signal. If this button is not pressed, the signal is true. Okay, there are two more signals in our simulation. Sensors for front position and reverse position for our pneumatic actuator. So now you can see that the sensor for back position is activated. And now the sensor for front position is activated. Now I have uh, applied a simple program and you can see that the signal for coil Y2 can be activated, can be set to true when I switch this selector switch. Okay, there are two more output signals for LED for start button and for LED for stop button. We will use them later on. Okay, before we will start creating our first program in ladder logic, 
a few more words about variables. Let's go offline right now. As you can see in this table, we have applied a naming convention for our variables. We use Hungarian notation. That means we use sp special prefixes for different data types. For example, for Boolean type, we use X. We also use camel case notation. It means that we use with lower case letter and then we'll, we will start the name of the variable with uppercase. You will learn more about different data types and naming convention in our full PLC course. Now I want you to know that we use Hungarian notation and camel case. If you start the name for Boolean type, you use X and then you will start with capital letter. Okay, let's define a new variable. For example, let's define output X coil Y3. As you can see, our system and declared automatically this variable as the output. Click on the address field. And here you can select memory area where you want to define your variable. You can define input variables, output variables as Q, or you can define this variable as memory tag. This is the auxiliary variable that you can program in your code. Okay, here you can assign byte number for this variable, for example, byte number three, and bit number from zero to seven for this byte. Okay, let's define input variable, for example, x sensor 10. And now we have to change ty the type for the address. This is the input variable. And we have to assign the address for this variable. As you can see, our addresses are the same. So we have to change address for this variable. And perfect, we have defined input variable. How we can find the address, the byte number and bit number for this variable? How we can check what is the address of the physical channel. You can go to device configuration. You can go to properties. You can go to general, digital inputs, digital outputs, IO addresses, and here you can assign start address for inputs and start address for outputs. If you assign those addresses, you can go to IO tags. And here you can check the addresses of proper channels in this module. As you can see, we use CPU 1211 and it has limited number of inputs and outputs. But don't worry, you use the same memory area to define, for example, field input and output channels 
that you can use with your PLC. You can connect a Profinet module, uh, control outputs and read inputs from the module. So in our case, in this simulation, it doesn't matter if we have proper addresses uh, in our physical system because we only use the simulation. In a real system, you can use this CPU, CPU or you can use another CPU or you can use field IOs. Okay, during this lesson, you have learned about input signals, output signals, declaring variables, and the last thing I would like to show you are data blocks. Go to program blocks, click add new module, and here you can define data block. This is the last type of uh, variable declaration that you can uh, do in your project. Click OK. And a new data block appeared in your project. Here you can define a variable, for example, x variable 1. This is Boolean type variable. You can assign start value. As you can see, there are no address for this variable. This uh, variable is declared inside data block and it can be used in your code. Okay, this is it regarding variables and I will show you how to declare constants. If you go to tag table, you can select tags or user constants. If you select user constants, here you can see the constants declared in your project. As you can see, there are some constants already declared in this project. If you want a new table, you can click add new tag table. Go to tag table number one, user constants. And here you can define a constant, for example, x always true, data type bool, and value true. Okay, perfect. Okay, I think that's uh, all for now regarding variables. We will use all those signals later on in our ladder logic. So thank you for watching and let's proceed to the next lesson.